So there's a top part to this that I have to build separately because this is a 10 foot built in and even though my shop now has tall ceilings, it wasn't tall enough to, to build a 10 foot built in in the whole shop. So basically all I did was I took some two scrap pieces of plywood. This is a facade for the top. This needed to be there because there's duct work at the top of the room. I basically just went through and marked everything so it lined up with the styles. This customer really wanted everything to be symmetric. So you could see I went through and lined everything up with the styles. I also had my drawing that I could pull measurements from. And they basically just want this raised, um, this sunken in panel look at the top, but also some on the two edges, there's slots for vents. So I went through and I mapped all this out. The measurements aren't really important because the likelihood of this fitting in someone else's home is very low. But basically I have a line at the bottom designates how much it's overlaying the cabinets and the top line designates how far down the crown is coming. From those two lines, I worked out center and then went from there. So then I could mark out what needs to be removed. I built this. There's many ways to build stuff like this. If this was going to be a real piece of furniture, I probably would have spent the time to make frame and panel construction. But because it's not, it's just a facade, I cheated frame and panel construction, which is basically what this is. So I have this three quarter uh, inch piece of ply and I just want to remove all of those marks I made. I wanted these lines to be as clean as possible. So the easiest way to do that is to lower the panel on the table saw blade. You can see I had two marks on my fence that tells me when to lower it. And then obviously when I get to the back side of my line, I can lift the, it up. If you've never done a cut like this, um, there, I imagine they could be a little intimidating at first, but it's a super safe cut as long as you do everything slowly and make sure everything's up against the fence. No abrupt movements with this sort of thing. So you can see I'm running the panel through and then I can lift it up from the bottom and then line up the marks on the top of the panel with the marks on my fence, lower again, and then make the same cut. You do something like this with a jigsaw, but you're just not gonna get the same clean lines. And the, the circular saw, this veneer on this cabinet grade plywood is extremely thin. So the circular saw has a tendency to, to really ruin the top side of veneer. So I decided to use the table saw. A little bit longer process, but it's super clean. This is just kind of a close up of that. You can see I'm just lowering it based on those marks and then lifting it when I get to the end. Now there will be some backside marks on this because the blade's circular, but you'll never see the backside of this. It's gonna be permanently attached and never removed. So then to make clean cut on the edges, I decided to set this up with the rate alarm saw. I can lower the blade down into the piece. It's weighted in place and get those nice clear cuts on my edges. So I could just turn the blade on and lower it. I have it set up so that it's centered in that panel. Lower the blade enough, turn it off, lift it up, and then there is that edge cut. There will be a little material left, which I'll take out with a handsaw, but I was pretty happy with how this cut. Once again, there's many ways to do this. You could do this with a router as well. Um, I just think this was probably the easiest way to go about doing it, so that is how I decided to do it. And like I said, at the end, there will be a little bit of material still left. I use a handsaw to, to cut that out. This also makes this piece much lighter by removing um, a, a rather large bulk of the center of it. I didn't want to get too thin with the material. Number one, I would have had to order new material. I had this because I was buying multiple sheets of plywood for this project, but also the thinner material bows a lot and I didn't want to have the hassle of dealing with, with really warped material for, for something like this. So then I'm going to create a rather thick rabbit on the back. I have this rabbiting bit that comes with a, a set of bearings so that you can get um, your groove as wide as you want or as thin as you want. And I'm basically just gonna make a groove so that I could inset some quarter inch, uh, quarter inch material that is also left over from this project. And that will create um, the facade of this being frame and panel construction. So just going through and creating that groove, 
Um, they had sent me a source photo for this built-in, so I'm copying the design of that, and the frame and panel was pretty close to the surface, so this groove ended up being quite thick. I removed a fair amount of material. I could go in with a chisel and, and square up the corners, and then I could just cut some quarter-inch ply to, to fit in all of these. So this was pretty simple work. And the nice thing is this is all going to be primed. Um, so this is all really nice material for, for primer. I really don't even spend a lot of time sanding this grade of, of plywood before painting it. And then those are just the inset panels in place. You can see what I mean by there being excess marks on the back side, but you will not see it. So then I had to create these grooves for the side that has the, the air duct in the back, and I thought I could do that on the table saw, but unfortunately it just eventually, a little, a little bit off in the beginning led to it being really off down towards the bottom. So I decided just to cut out that material, count my losses, cut out that middle material, and I would make um, standalone fins to be glued into place. This is a little bit longer of a process than it would have been if I could have gotten the dado stack to work. But the other problem was this thin material, it just started flexing. So it was creating too much, too much um, uh, undulations in, in my measurements. And I, I really didn't like that. So I had a bunch of leftover poplar stock. I ripped it down to, to th um, the, th the thinness I needed. I, f I measured out all of that so that the gaps and everything would be symmetrical. I believe I went with 5 16 inch stock and then 5 16 inch gaps. That was what the math worked out to be. I'm putting a little lap on the back side of this just so it has a little better um, adhesion to the panel and I kept them this thick because it's three quarter inch stock that I was cutting it from there was really no purpose in making them any thinner so you can see they fit in this panel nicely I can line them all up glue them in place put a couple brads in there and that was how I decided to solve that problem so that is the panel with the the, the standalone gaps for for the duct work so the top side of this also had a chamfer detail on it in the source photo they sent me. I can't do this. I you technically can do it with plywood because I guess I could have put putty on there and it will be painted. But I happen to have this scrap um, cedar laying around the shop that was already a 45. So I decided just to cut the edges off of it and it would leave me a perfect little 45 degree chamfer. And then I just went through and inset that around the panel. That's, I do that at the end, so that will be in a couple minutes. So in order to attach this, I still have this lip at the top side of this cabinet like I do to attach the face frame. I wanted to utilize that for the top and the, the whole thing comes down about an inch just for a little bit of added strength. So I could cu finally cut my styles down to size. I usually leave them long, but I knew I wanted to leave them extra long in this circumstance because I hadn't decided exactly how tall they were going to be. But you can see I'm cutting them down to that mark, and then this plywood facade is going to sit right on top of that. Same process before I can do this, I have to remove these little fins um, so that that piece I'm putting up, up top can float across the entire top without heating, eat, uh, hitting those perpendicular parts. And just like the bottom cabinets, while I had these on the floor, I added the little um, half-inch spacer on one back side so that these two meet at the face frame in the top, but also meet at the spacer on the back. So it gives just a nice solid construction. They can't really bow and, and tweak in the space. So there's the panels on the bottom. Uh, like I said, this won't fit in the shop, so I test cut the groove for this on a scrap piece of plywood. I set it up in place and then pretty much cross my fingers and hope that this all worked out uh, in the space because there was no way to, to do this beforehand. So this groove is the exact same groove as I put on the entire face frame. It's a really simple quarter inch dado in there. And then that fits in the receiving uh, groove on the top side of the cabinet. You could see, get an ideal, a visual ideal now of how that's all going to set in place. And that seemed to work pretty well. I, I kind of narrowed that in, and then I could put that groove on my panels, and like I said, um, and finally install it in the space once it, once it gets there. So there is adding that groove. 
And then like I said, that the top side there is much thicker because there's going to be crown in the space that will cover that. This customer was really into symmetry. I have no problem with that. It makes building a little bit more nerve wracking because people like that usually do pick up on little things that, that other people don't. But I do like knowing beforehand this customer point blank told me that they, they are really into symmetry and wanted everything perfect. So that is why I spent probably more time than I would have laying everything out and making sure it's, it's down to a T. And then that was just putting a little groove on the edge of the panels so I could put a little shim in there like this and then um, cut that down obviously. And then once it's in the space and I glue those two panels together, they'll have a little, um, almost a floating tenon in there to, to help them uh, stay attached. And then I just went through and glued all my panels in. Usually you don't glue panels into place, but this is plywood on plywood, so I'm not really worried about um, seasonal humidity moving this panel. That's why I keep referring it to as facade frame and panel. It looks like frame and panel, but it's just not built in the same way at all. And then there is the little moldings I cut from my cedar. I can go through and frame this out, just 45 in all the corners. It's cedar and it's really thin stock, so I just used a utility knife to cut my corners, tack it into place. This is the beauty of things that are being painted. You can use hardware and whatnot, and all of that will be covered with putty. You could shave down the top because it was a little bit proud, and then uh, that was done. And then before I prime this, which I thought I could film, but I didn't, um, I just went through and permanently attached all of the rails and styles, except for the two edges. Those are going to be um, scribed to the space, so they need to be detachable. Now, a lot of my work is still around where I used to live, so this was getting transported pretty far. So this is the space. You can see just how tight those clearances I make are. That's why built-ins are so nerve-wracking. Um, it's really tight clearances and I'd never really know if it's going to fit, especially since I measured all this when there was only framing in the room. There was no floor or drywall, so we were kind of guesstimating all of those thicknesses. But this is my, my uh, frame in the floor. The most important thing of all this is making it level. And then the customer wanted this tabletop, I spoke about this in the last video, would be the same thickness as the window frame, and he wanted it to, to dead end in the window. So what we decided to do was just cut out this entire bottom portion of the cell and then the, the piece will float underneath of it. So I just did that with a handsaw, pretty simple stuff. I kept this piece, um, whoever did the framing in here really nice, they, they finished it off properly with returns. I kept that bottom piece because I had to cut the molding a little bit thick in order to remove that style in the corner and then I would just patch it in place. So then once all that was done, I could um, attach these cabinets. Everything at this point from the ground up gets screwed into studs. So the, the, the two by six base there was screwed into the floor. The cabinets are screwed in together and screwed into the floor. I didn't film a ton of this. Like I said, this was a pretty long commute. I had to drag all of this stuff from my shop to the space. So filming on top of it just, just makes this process so much longer. You can see I put screws, everything is attached to the studs in the back. And then I had made this a little bit shorter to account for, for changes in measurements. So I had to add little quarter inch shims. I was assuming I would have to do this underneath the, the tabletop there in order to get it true. And then obviously like most places, your the walls are not gonna be perfectly square. So this was a pretty easy fix for this one. The, it was off by like a quarter inch and I needed to trim it down to fit anyway. So I just had to take some material off that back edge. And then you could see how this tabletop's finally gonna fit into place. Could glue it all together now and everything slides into place. Those were those two pieces I had. And then the front could go on as well. So that was basically how I did that. And then you could see this is putting glue on the, the front side that will slide into place as, as well. And that's what that finish looks like. I was really happy with how this all turned out. Obviously remove some of the glue and whatnot and, and this will look pretty good. And you can see the, how that, that circular saw really just chews up this uh, edge wood, which is fine because the, the cabinets will, will cover that. And once again, checking for square each level I add 
At this point, I'm adding the shells. It's just pretty easy. Same process, lifting them up into place. They're centered on top of the, the bottom shells. And then obviously back against the wall. This is scribing for the style. You could see new construction. This wasn't too bad. It was only off by a little bit. So if it's only off by a little bit like this, I decide to hand plane because you can get it a real close fit with, with hand planing. And this was new construction, so there was limited electric. There were no lights in that, no lights or plumbing installed yet. So I only had one extension cord um, and not a lot to, to, to work with there. So having hand tools was pretty convenient. And that's how those styles fit in place. And once I have the fit like that, I glue them into place as, as well. So that's a nice fit there. And then you can see why I left that little gap. All I did was, was cut a little piece off the bottom of the molding and glue it back into place. I believe this was after the second or the third day was my progress. And like I said, this is a pretty, pretty long drive, a little over an hour. So all this uh, transporting back and forth quite, took up quite a bit of time. So then to add the top, the studs in the ceiling, I put these little spacers on so I had something to attach to the ceiling, some spacers on the wall. I have my little piece of wood in there and then this just popped right into place. I was really happy with how this went up. So then I could attach it with brads all around the, the tops and the bottoms. And like I said, those pieces in the wall and the ceiling are sunk into studs. So they'll hold uh, pretty well. And you could see how they had the, the holes in the backside there for the HVAC. So now those vents probably make a lot more sense. The gap at the front for the crown. To put all the hardware on, I use my laser level. Um, I usually save hardware like this to the end. Like I said, this was a, a pretty long drive. So little things always get thrown off when you have to transport stuff. So I usually decide to do the hardware at the end. And that is basically what it looks like. I put another coat of primer on this. This is a really cool job in the sense that I didn't have to do any of the trim. They were having uh, trim guys come in the day I left in order to do the crown and the baseboard. And then I didn't have to do the final painting because they were having painters come in to paint the whole house. But I do have a picture at the end of the progress of what that looks like. And that's about it for this one.